years, years of being unhappy with myself, years with the fear of being judged, and I'm about to face that fear in front of all of you, and I'm terrified. So please don't come out too hard. Even though it might not seem like it, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. You're probably thinking, what the heck? How does she have bipolar disorder if she doesn't look crazy? Because the thing is, most of you think you know what it is because you already heard it in the movies and heard someone say, oh, the we're so bipolar today. And most of you think you know it. But the truth is, being diagnosed with the disorder is nothing like being moody on a Monday morning. Ever since I was little, I felt that there was a part of me that didn't exactly fit in. I had really high stress levels. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't sleep. I knew that there was a part of me that, in the puzzle, the, just didn't fit. Ten years later, I got the answer to all my questions. In 2015, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. It felt good. It felt as if I hadn't gotten an answer to all of the questions I asked myself when I grew up. But little did I know that in 2016, life was going to throw me the biggest challenge I have ever had. In March 2016, my entire world crumbled. It got distorted. It got shattered. That was when I was diagnosed with depression. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I felt empty. I felt like there was nothing that I could enjoy. I was gone. I lost who I was. I didn't have an identity. I stopped going to school. I felt as if depression had tied me to a bed, and I couldn't get up. I began to question my existence. Did my life really matter? Would the world notice if I would just disappear? I was just one more drop in the ocean. Was I meaningless? The world would be fine without me. I began taking antidepressants and went to therapy, but they weren't helping so much. Until one day, I discovered writing. I began to write as if it was a diary, and just it helped me a lot. It helped me explain to people how I felt. It helped me put back the pieces together. It was like way more effective than therapy. I loved it. It really made a change in my life. So I went back to school. I was doing better. Somehow I managed to finish the school year. I don't know how. But I was scrolling to Facebook one day when I saw a link to a website called The Mighty. So I clicked it. I began reading their stories. And they helped me a lot. It made me feel like I wasn't the only one suffering. Like that there were people like me, that I wasn't alone, that I had people to relate to. So one day, I came back from school. I had a great day in school. And I decided to send one of my posts to the mighty. And they posted. It was the first time I actually felt proud of myself in a really, really long time. It was amazing. I was out of rock bottom and everything just changed. And I, as soon as he posted it and they began to post everything, I knew that I had the power to communicate a message to the people. That I could show people how I felt through my writing. So I took advantage of that and began using it to help people. But 
in October, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. The thing that people were making fun of and talking about had just become part of my life. I was afraid and just didn't know what to do. Um, then I was handled a little cool. I got the hang of it because I had already someone managed to to cope with my depressive episodes. And also having to change treatment for mental illness is really hard because you feel like a science experiment that you have to take this medicine and this and they have to change it all the time. It actually took me one year and a half to find my treatment that worked perfectly. But then one day my bipolar disorder decided to give me a gift. It came as my first hypomanic episode. It was horrible. I like to describe the hypomanic episodes as if you drank four energy drinks at the same time. You barely sleep, you feel invincible, you feel like you can rule the world. You know, this might seem good, might seem good. I actually don't like it because you feel as if the bipolar disorder had a controller and you were the video game character and it makes you do things that you wouldn't normally do and then when you realize what you have done, you feel guilty. You can't help to hate the fact that a bipolar disorder just controls you. One of my <laughs> favorite things that I did in a hypomanic episode was one time where I went to the supermarket and bought 10 buckets uh, of ice cream and 15 ice cream cookies and I ate them in five days. But there came a point where I was having an episode every three weeks. In June I was when I had my first hypomanic episode. In July I had a depressive episode that I had to make one of the hardest decisions also. When people say that people with bipolar disorder are overachievers, they're not lying. I had a 4.0 GPA, I got into NHS, I was practicing to get really high SAT score because I wanted to go to an Ivy League, I wanted to be this perfect little human being. But it triggered my depressive episode, me pushing myself too hard because I never seemed to be good enough. And I lost control of my mental stability. That was when I had to make the decision to stay two years in Panama study until I learned to manage my disorder and be stronger and go off to college. It took me a long time to accept it, but eventually I did. But it felt as if my bipolar disorder had crushed all of my dreams since I was little. Then in August, I had uh, another hypomanic episode. In September and October, I kind of got a break from my episode. But in November, I got one of the most severe depressive episodes that I've had. I got tired, tired of having episodes. I couldn't do it anymore. It was hard. I just. Suicide was on my mind, everything. Just as soon as possible. <sighs> Having a monster here. Thank you.
and I'm having a little piece of light here telling you that you can do it. But I'm so focused on listening to a monster I had on this side that I just thought about suicide. And when you hear when I have to make big decisions, I get panic attacks. And people also say in the science that people are not gonna get far in life. But uh, I got so overwhelmed with having one monster here, having a little piece of light here talking to me, all these thoughts running through my mind. Then I got so overwhelmed. I began to have a panic attack and that was when my parents found me. I knew that something was wrong. My indecisiveness had saved my life. I had been working in an organization called Ditchum for two years. It taught me that people need us as much as we need them. That we all have something to give. That I, when I thought I had nothing more to give, I found out that I did. I began to feel inspired knowing that I had the power to help people. So I decided to one day create a blog where I would share my experiences with everyone and be actually one of the first people to admit their mental illness. The funny thing is that I was really scared of what people would say. It took me a year to press the publish button. But the moment I did, I felt free. I felt as if I had taken the mask off and could finally be myself. I, I have gotten really positive feedbacks on my blog and I, that just made me want to keep going also. It's hard and it's really scary right now I'm scared telling my story over here. But you can do it, just like I did. I want to tell you that follow your heart. Even if you're the only one who is doing it, I promise you that you will find people along the way. I know it seems scary that the uncertainty of not knowing if you're going to fail or succeed takes over you, but I promise you, and I'm a living proof of that, that if you follow your heart and you work for it, you will be able to do it. In 2016, I wouldn't have imagined being here standing and telling you my story. So, my disorder has pushed me and will continue to push me now. But I have learned to read the signs and know how to help myself. And the most important thing actually is that I have learned. I, it's really hard and sometimes I just wanna hide and disappear. But I have come to the acceptance that bipolar disorder is part of me but it's not who I am. I, people in life have to find something that guides you, something that you know you're good at. For me, it's uh, writing, sometimes, drawing, as you saw in the presentation, and knowing that I can help people by having a voice. Because many people suffer in silence because they're ashamed of their mental illness. Since Panamanian society can be very close-minded about that. So people suffer in silence, just like I did. And in society, everyone suffers commits suicide. It's all over the news. But we forget to see that 
and say that there is hope and that you're going to get through it. And we just, people like I would seem to think that it was the only solution because we just make it public. In reality, you can do it. You're strong enough. You just got to believe in yourself and I promise you everything will be okay.